up, guys? So this is a what they call reaction video to some of the videos or information that's out there. Um, we're going through some of the videos that have been posted and or uh, public records requests that have been supplied. Um, so that way we can kind of hear it for ourselves, not that we haven't already heard it, but then I guess some of you are asking for a reaction video. Um, We'll go ahead and try. I, I don't have very many emotions, but we'll see what we can do. So let's go ahead and start. Before we get started, it's a free call. Just so those that are confused, I didn't black my ma mail my mom to go ahead and pay the phone bill. So the call's free, so make sure you guys pay attention to that. Justice free call. Press zero. See, to you heard that, the word free. Okay. Excuse this free call. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and, and free. Reporting. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Hey, hello? Hey, buddy. This is listen. Before we get started, I, I, uh, I need you to write down the information. Uh, Lake Mary Civic Center, they need to be there by 10 o'clock So, I just got booked into jail, and the first call I make is to one of my contractors, and I'm so worried that I just got arrested for impersonating a police officer that I was able to only worry about an escort that needed to be handled later that day. So, what does that say? that I was worried about being arrested for impersonating, or was I worried to make sure that my funerals were taken care of? You all heard that, right? They ran the tag, it came back stolen, and it's all on the body camera. So I'm referring to a body camera, not knowing that this call is going to then end up on the internet or in the possession of the state prosecutor's hands. So I'm just such a great liar. I'm able to think 30 steps ahead of the state prosecutor's office that, by the way, a jailhouse call that is illegally in the possession of certain people like real world uh, because only, as I said before, the prosecutor's office and or the officer that's in charge of the investigation is allowed to have access to this, this audio. So I'm so far ahead that I already knew that the prosecutor's office and or the sheriff's office was going to leak this information to the internet and use it against me in court that I'm so smart that I was able to lie way in advance to recycle that my camera was recording. Where's that recording again? Oh, that's right. <laughs> we'll do a video about that. Apparently, Windermere says it doesn't exist because I was never recording, they say. Hmm. But I was smart enough to say that in the recording of the call, on the jailhouse call, that would never supposed to be released to anyone. Your motorcycle, but you're wearing a uniform, and... Yeah, I, I saw, I saw the, the charges already, because as soon as I saw that, um, I called your wife and told me that you had Yeah, dude, they said that we were using my, we're using the radio illegally. Like, bro, <sighs> this How is fuck. Body camera better be rolling because we didn't do anything. There's, I 
So that's a great point. Apparently, Windermere, in their first statements, as you might be able to pull up and see, they say that they saw a funeral escort coming. They describe my motorcycle, and they even explain in the report that it's purple lights. The first reports of the four officers that ride them. Hmm. And then a week later, the reports changed to, oh, we thought they were a police department coming through town. Hmm. Again, I'm so far ahead of everybody else that I tell Recycle, it's interesting that they're talking about, and the officer's body camera later on, we'll have to do that video. I even explained to him we're using purple and amber lights and we're dressed as we are. How are we impersonating? Who did I pull over? Who did I stop? Who did I give directive to? Where did I impersonate? When did I tell somebody I was a police officer? Because the three-pronged law of Florida is you have to tell somebody, wear something, and then make them believe. So who did I make believe? What was I wearing that said police or sheriff? And when did I give somebody a directive? Huh. Well, let's go back. Because when he got out of the car, you heard him. Did you hear him say my name yeah. right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's another great point. So the sergeant, who we have a history together immediately gets out of the car and says my name and says, hey, Jeremy, I've been waiting for you. Well, how the fuck have you been waiting for me if you didn't know we were doing a funeral escort through your town? That's another interesting thing. Oh, that's right. And when he gets out of his vehicle, he's a mile and a half out of his town. He knew who I was. He knew who I was. One of them answered the call, your phone. I called you. I went to call you. He had your number. And one of them answered the phone by the state. Signal 10 in Florida, especially in this area, is stolen. So the officers even just said the vehicle's not stolen. And then what does he say? Here, we'll play it back a little bit. I'm retarded. Hold on. Vehicle's not stolen. So what are they going to charge him with now? Right. So they charge me with resistance. So, not only the gentleman that then turned state's evidence because he was given a job at PCI security by Sergeant Bettler, um, but he even says on the recording, again, we were all in it months ahead of knowing that this would ever leak out, that the bike wasn't stolen, and they said they had to make up a charge quick. He literally just says that on an open recorded line the same day it just happened so my question to anyone if he was lying how did he come up with that lie so fast and now he just said that the bike wasn't stolen which we all knew since there was over five thousand dollars of lights and stickers invested into a motorcycle didn't just go steal it from the gas station and then just go ahead and throw all that stuff on real fast and go for a ride. Um, <laughs> now obviously, uh, and since I wasn't charged with this theft of a, my own motorcycle, and, and you've all seen the body cam video where I'm saying the registration's on the bike, the registration's on the bike, the registration's on the bike, let me prove it. Uh, and one of the other funny things I kept saying too with that was, my camera's recording, my camera's recording, my camera's recording. So the reaction to this is, you guys just heard it. That's only one person, I because I know I call another contractor and they say the same thing, that they heard the call because they left the radio on and they put my helmet in between them and while they were talking about me, they said that the bike wasn't stolen. They said that they needed to make up a charge quick. Make up a charge? But you just said you saw me do something to be impersonating. You kind of neglected in your report that 
you didn't see me from the roundabout all the way until the stop sign, which is five miles, because there was over 80 cars on that escort. So anyhow, with that said, I'm a little confused when you're using this, your own state witness that's going to flip evidence against me just said that they said they needed to make up a charge. I, I don't I don't know how to even respond to that, quite honestly. Anyways. With that said, can't talk too much since it's an ongoing investigation and the case is going to end soon, I'm hoping. But just digging in there, again, it's a jailhouse call that illegally is on the internet because the prosecutor's office and or the sheriff's deputy that's lead investigator on it so it would be either detective allen or sergeant Vittler, pulled these calls and then released them to the internet which is under florida sunshine state law for public records and things illegal so we're hearing an illegal phone call obtained by the people that are said prosecuting me hmm and they're releasing it so that way I'm guilty by public opinion, not by guilty of criminal evidence. And yet, in the video, in the recording, they're saying that they knew the bike wasn't stolen. And they're saying that they needed to make up charges. Make up charges. Does anyone else understand what that means? Make up charges. So guys, we're gonna show another video real fast and do the reactions. Um, so for those that don't know, this video was turned over to the Orange County Sheriff's Office Eternal Affairs Division by an attorney. Um, the attorney took this video along with many other videos and turned it over to the Sheriff's Office Internal Affairs where then I then did context and information in reference to this video. Um, shockingly, the whole data stick went missing of over two hours worth of videos. Um, nobody knows where it went. It was deleted, gone, poof. And then all the charges started happening and I started getting arrested. So real fast, we're doing a funeral. Off-duty deputy felt like, I guess he thought he could do what he did. Um, we'll get to that. And um, I had it all in video, 911 calls, multiple Orlando police officers. At the end of the day, uh, again, the story changes. We're gonna go ahead and start this. So again, it's a beautiful sunny day. Birds are cheeping, squirrels are squirreling. Somebody sent me that, I say that all the time. I say that shit all the time. Chipmunks are chipping, I, I'm telling you. Uh, and so we're doing a funeral escort it's about 40 or 50 cars we're going through winter park winter park police has already passed us everything's good we're good we're waving orlando police has gone by a couple of times um we're in an intersection and that's where this little bit gets clipped out because obviously they didn't want to get caught recording whoever it is recording the evidence um before it disappeared and, and vanished they wanted to make sure they only got what was the important part, which was the actual off-duty deputy hitting me with his truck. So we're going down Mills, coming up on Virginia, which is after Nebraska. And I'm advising the team that we're going left on Virginia because they've already gone through Nebraska. So currently, right now, we're three traffic lights, almost four traffic lights stretched out with multiple units in those intersections. So here comes this black truck. So this black truck was already advised to us twice, which isn't in the video, but I'll give you that context. Twice, two other units have already advised that he's cutting in and out, blowing his horn, flicking them off, telling them to go fuck themselves because he's rolled down his window. He's cursing out the window. Um, of course, that conversation is not here. So that's my word against his, I guess. Um, but what was then videotaped and is now surfaced um, the fact if you have to stop and think about it the fact that 
the video disappeared in any way, shape, or form should be clearer evidence that something's not right. For somebody to have to record it to prove my innocence, the horrible person that everybody hates, somebody with inside the same sheriff's office that this deputy that hit me with his truck works, recorded this scene off a computer should be another old huge red flag. So the truck's been cutting in and out of the funeral. He's cursed at the guys at the last two ex intersections. They told him to get out. It's a funeral. He's cut into the funeral again. I'm in the intersection at this intersection and I'm going to say, Hey, it's a funeral. Please get out. I say three times, Hey, it's a funeral. I need you to move. I need you to move. Please get out of the funeral. Um, at this point, he slows down his vehicle, and you'll see it in the camera. He slows down his vehicle. I'm to the far right of the lane. I'm, I'm outside of the travel lane, standing outside the travel lane. He slows down, aims his vehicle at me, and accelerates, striking my leg as I'm hitting on the hood. Um, you don't have to believe me. Whatever I say ain't shit. It's, it's in video. So at this point, he rolls up and then he rolls down his window and he's telling me, you can't do what you're doing. I'm a deputy sheriff. I'm going to take you to jail. And I say to him, and all you law enforcement officers out there, please understand what I'm telling you right now. I say to him, I don't give a fuck who you are. You're cutting in and out of the funeral and you're putting these people in danger by slamming on your brakes because you're hitting on your brakes on purpose. He was actually brake checking some of the vehicles in the procession. Um almost to get a rise out of us. Uh, so please understand in no way, shape or form do I say that towards your badge or the sworn oath that you've taken. I would never disrespect you that way. But when somebody's just hit me with their vehicle, who's sworn to uphold that law, who's wearing that five point star in the same county that I'm operating in and works at the same sheriff office and also works very closely with our best buddy Vidler, um, does this, does what his actions are, cursing at our escort units, cutting off a funeral, and slamming on their brakes. At that point, I think, I think it's safe to say, I don't give a fuck who you are. So I apologize again to any law enforcement officer that might take offense to that. If you're doing your job just like I am and you're doing it right, I respect you and everybody else that wears that badge. But when you're using your sheriff's badge or authority outside of what your job is, I don't believe that's right. But that's my personal belief. And I'm saying here, I you can't cut in and out of the escort. He then advises me that he can arrest me and take me to jail. And I tell him that doesn't matter. You're cutting in and out of the escort and you're putting the family in danger. The family at this current point is driving around us to continue through the funeral. At this point, Recycle, our buddy who was on that procession, uh, advises he'll get the tag number. He just witnessed the whole thing. Um, he watched everything happen and... Later on, he tells the lawyers that he saw it, but then, of course, his statement changes, too. Um, I'm assuming probably after he spoke with Vittler and Ramsey, but that's just an assumption. So I get in my truck. I was doing the escort in my Tahoe at that time, and I drive off. So, shocking. The fact that this video was leaked from within inside the walls of the sheriff's office should be enough cause for somebody somewhere to stop everything in the proceedings or, or just in general stop and start asking questions. And what's funny is the Internal Affairs Division advises me later that they don't believe he did anything wrong, which is confusing because they had the video. And then when we asked for the video back, Shockingly, again, it was missing. It disappeared. Hmm. I can tell you right now, if you committed a crime and it was on video and it was missing, 
you would still be in a lot of shit. Eh. I ain't saying it's a conspiracy, but I don't see any black helicopters flying above me either. So, you guys figure it out. Talk to you later. Motor One's moving. Fuck boy! I'll, I'll get his tag number. Get his tag number. He's a cop.